Recently, I mentioned the approach ban in another video, and inevitably, someone asked me what this approach ban is. So what is the approach ban? Well, anyone who flies in Canada must be familiar with the approach ban. The actual rules are part of the Canadian Air Regulations, and are detailed in several different sections depending on the type of operation you're in. But instead of trying to read all this legal lingo, I will try to break it down into a more plain English explanation. But first, a little background. The approach ban regulations were enacted as a result of several crashes that occurred with aircraft on approach during extremely poor visibility. Unfortunately, many of these crashes were fatal. Transport Canada, acting on recommendations from the Transportation Safety Board of Canada, banned pilots from conducting approaches if the visibility fell below certain minimum criteria. The latest version of this approach ban was enacted in 2006, replacing a previous less stringent ban. So what is the approach ban? Essentially, the approach ban is a regulation that prohibits a pilot from continuing approach past a certain point if the required visibility minima is not met. The cutoff point for an approach is normally the final approach fix, or FAF, usually marked by this little cross on the approach plate, or if there is no FAF, the point where the aircraft intercepts the final approach course. What's different about Canada from most other countries in the world is that the approach ban does not normally start at the visibility published on the chart, but usually at a much lower visibility. But wait, why would you shoot an approach below the specified visibility on the chart? When a visibility is published on an approach plate, this is an advisory visibility, the visibility that will most likely lead to a successful approach. However, it is conceivable that even if the visibility falls somewhat below this value, it is still possible to complete an approach successfully. There are several reasons why Transport Canada allows this. Number one is that Transport Canada recognizes that weather reporting is not perfect. It can be affected by localized phenomena, and the proliferation of auto stations, especially at remote locations, has increased the possibility that the report of visibility may not represent the actual visibility along the runway. The second reason is that many parts of Canada are very sparsely settled and very remote. In some cases, the nearest alternate airport can be hundreds of miles away. Given these two considerations, Transport Canada decided to allow some leeway for pilots to attempt an approach if their reported visibility is lower than the recommended visibility, instead of immediately diverting to an airport that could possibly be hours away. So what is the minimum visibility allowed by the regulations before this approach ban kicks in? Unfortunately, like everything in the regulation world, nothing is ever simple. There are in fact three different versions of the approach ban limits in Canada depending upon the type of operation. General Aviation has one set of rules, while commercial operators have two sets, a general rule and a better rule for operators that apply for and receive an operations specification or op spec from Transport Canada. Before we discuss the actual limits, please note that in Canada there are three possible RVRs for every runway. RVR Alpha, Bravo and Charlie. RVR Alpha is the touchdown zone RVR, RVR Bravo is the midpoint RVR, and RVR Charlie is the far end RVR. Of course, not all runways will have all RVRs available. So let's start with the simplest rule set, general aviation. For non-precision and Cat 1 ILSs, the approach ban applies if the reported weather falls below the minima shown here. For a runway with RVR Alpha and Bravo available, RVR Alpha must be at or above 1200 and RVR Bravo must be at or above 600 or zero if you're a helicopter. If only a single RVR value is available for a runway, either RVR Alpha or Bravo, it must be 1200. And of course for a CAT 2 approach, the minima are the same as CAT 1, except that both RVR Alpha and Bravo are required. If you're conducting a CAT 3 approach, under the general aviation rules, RVR Alpha, Bravo and Charlie must be greater than or equal to 600. Well that was fairly simple, but there's nothing to memorize here. Everything here is available through the link included in the description below, so you can either print it out or at least keep it handy for whenever you're flying. If you're a commercial operator, the restrictions are a little bit more complicated and vary based on the advisory visibility for the approach. As I mentioned previously, there are two sets of criteria for commercial operators. There's a default general commercial operator approach ban and then an op-spec specific approach ban. Any operator in Canada must automatically use the default general approach ban unless they receive special approval from Transport Canada for the alternate lower ban. This special approval is known as an operations specification or op spec. An op spec is simply an approval attached to the original air operator certificate that describes a special operation allowed and any criteria or restrictions for this special operation. Here's a quick hint. 
almost all of the major operators in Canada will usually apply for and receive the lower approach pen op spec. But feel free to use whichever table you feel is most appropriate. So what are the minimum values? Well here they are for the general commercial operator version. For any given approach, find the advisory visibility published on your chart and then look in this table at the left hand column. Once you find your visibility, look across to the right hand column and this is the minimum visibility that must be available before you can even attempt the approach. If the visibility is below this value, you cannot try this approach. Since that was probably about as clear as mud, how about a quick example to make it a little bit easier? Here is the chart for the ILS to runway 24 right in Toronto Pearson. The advisory visibility found on this plate at the bottom is RVR 5000 or one statute mile. So we look at our approach band table and across from the one mile RVR 5000 on the left column, we see the approach band kicks in at three quarters of a mile visibility or RVR 4000. If the visibility or RVR is below this value, you cannot fly this approach past the final approach fix. Note how the required visibility compares to the advisory visibility. One mile advisory versus three quarter miles required. For most of the values on this chart, the required visibility is approximately 75% of the advisory visibility. So what about that special op spec version? Well here's the table if you have the op spec. Looks pretty similar, right? Except pick any advisory visibility on the table this time and look at the required value. In this case the approach band value is always 50% of the advisory visibility, not 75%. This table is quite easy to memorize, but fear not, I've attached links to printed copies below. Please feel free to download them and print them, and use them while you're simming. So I know you're asking, why are there values listed for both RVR and visibility on the commercial operator tables? Both values are listed in case the RVR is not available. When looking at the approach band, RVR, when it is available and considered reliable, takes precedence. More about RVR reliability later. However, if the RVR is unavailable, or considered unreliable, visibility can be used to enforce the approach ban. Except, and here comes one of many exceptions, that for airports north of 60 degrees north, ground visibility will never impose an approach ban. This is because way up north there are so few airports around that ground visibility reports are not always reliable and the alternates are very far distant. So I already mentioned one exception to the approach ban, but there's plenty more. What good is a regulation after all without exceptions? The first and most common exception is that if the aircraft has already passed the final approach fix, or intercepted final if there is no final approach fix, when the below approach band limit visibility is received, the aircraft can still continue on the approach. Another common exception is that if the RVR or visibility is fluctuating above and below the approach band limit, the aircraft can still continue the approach. And another common exception is that if the PIC has informed ATC that the approach is for training purposes only and that they intend to perform a missed approach at or above the decision height or minimum descent altitude, then the aircraft can continue the approach. An additional exception that is only available for GA aircraft using the GA approach ban is that if the RVR is below the limits but the reported visibility is one quarter mile or greater, then the approach ban does not apply. There are a few more exceptions that apply only for commercial operators. If a pilot can clearly see that the reported RVR or visibility is being affected by a localized phenomena and they can see that the visibility along the runway is greater than the approach band limitation, they can continue the approach. And one final exception, as I mentioned before, is that ground visibility cannot cause an approach band for airports north of 60 degrees north latitude. Alternate airports in this area are so rare that pilots must be allowed to attempt an approach if they judge there is a reasonable chance of success. So I'm sure that this is all as clear as mud so far, but hopefully a few more quick examples will help show how to use the approach band tables and help make the whole process clearer. Let's start by considering the NDB at runway 25 here in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Let's say for this example that we are a commercial operator, but without the special op spec approach band, so just the normal general approach band. Visibility reported today is one mile, RVR 5500. Can we do the approach? A quick look at the approach plates shows that the advisory visibility is one and three quarters. We then compare this to our approach pan table and see that for one and three quarters, we must have at least one and a half miles visibility or RVR greater than 6,000 to start the approach. Since the RVR and visibility both fall below this value, we cannot do the approach. If we had the special op spec approach pan, then could we do the approach? A quick look at this table shows us that yes, in fact, we could. For one and three quarters we must have at least one mile 
and an RVR greater than 5,000. We have RVR 5,500 and one mile reported, so we can do the approach. I'm mentioning both, but remember that the RVR is what takes precedence when it is available. So the RVR 5,500 in this case exceeds the requirement of RVR 5,000. For our next example, let's look at the RNAV GNSS Runway 24 here in Montreal, Mirabel, Quebec. Let's say that we are a commercial operator and that we do have the op spec for the lower approach band minimums. The weather today is reported as visibility one half mile, RVR 2200. Can we do this approach? Once again, we start by looking at the advisory visibility on the approach plate. In this case, RVR 5000 or one mile. Then we go to our approach band table. Across from one mile RVR 5000, we find that the minimum visibility is a half a mile. The minimum RVR is 2600. Can we do the approach? We do have the half mile visibility, but the RVR, when it is available and reliable, takes precedence. As long as we believe the RVR is reliable, we cannot do the approach because it is below the RVR 2600 required. We can, however, apply the special exception if the RVR is fluctuating above and below the minima. So if the RVR is 2800 one minute, 2200 the next, back up to 3000, down to 2000, then we can say it's fluctuating and ignore the RVR value. Use the visibility that has been published, one half mile, and we can fly the approach. For our last example, we're going to plan on the ILS Runway Tree 4 in Iqaluit, Nunavut. Again, we're going to consider that we're a commercial operator without the special op spec and use the general table. The RVR is not working today and the visibility is reported as one half mile. Can we do the approach? A quick look at the table here shows us that we need RVR 4000 or three quarters of a mile. When we switch to our approach band table for general aviation, we see that this requires us to then have at least a minimum of 5 eighths of a mile or RVR 3000. So without the RVR value available, we have to have greater than 5 eighths, but the visibility is only a half a mile. Can we shoot the approach? If you answered yes, then you are obviously paying attention to our presentation and deserve a prize. Iqaluit is at 63 degrees north latitude, which is north of 60 degrees north. As a result, visibility cannot impose an approach ban. You may not make it in, but you are always allowed to try the ILS runway 34 as long as the RVR is not available. So, in summary, the approach ban in Canada allows you to fly an approach at less than the charted visibility provided you follow the visibility limits listed on the approach ban table for your specific operation. For you simmers out there, I suggest choosing a table appropriate to your operation and keeping it handy. The different possibilities are complex, but if you stick to one particular set of approach band rules, they are not that complicated to learn. Since really poor visibility only occurs a few days a year in most locations, you will likely only need to pull out your approach band tables a few times a year. Good luck and stay safe.